They are happy. This is live happening right now. On. Bring that thing home. Bam, he's Church on the ground. I can't even thank you enough for all the support that we have gotten. 530% more, 313% more, greater than 999% more in the last year. That is freaking amazing. Another new day on the front end of this truck. Let's see if we can't knock it the rest of the way out. I did lower the axle down like I talked about, took the spring out and easily tighten this. It just gets it out of the way, might as well. Julie's back there throwing some paint on the spring right now. Go ahead and get the knuckle to where it is secured onto the truck. Actually, I'm not. Okay, these are just set in there. The knuckle is just hand tight. I can loosen all these by hand. I wanna get the dust seal out and I'm gonna get the wire brush and clean this down to bare metal so that the updated seal will slide in. Really wanna do that before I put the knuckles on because the knuckle is just massively in the way. A heck of a lot easier without it on, so let's do that right now. We also got massive bump stop issues all the way around the entire truck. All the bump stops fell out. They're uh, commonly old. And this one would be a whole set, all four of them. Yank that off. And this is the updated seal, the RS-170. It looks like this, let's open it up. This little guy will get the call as it fits great. That ridge right there presses inside of that. Flash on. See, it presses in there. Kind of hard to do too. Actually, you really want to press this in before the axle slides in, but you cannot because this is our axle right here. This guy will slide over the end of the axle and it'll sit about right here. Okay, so that's where that goes. That goes right here. But I really like to have these on. I feel a lot of people probably do not put these on. These are just little helpers to hold the axle up. Just for install, these don't hit anything when they're running, just so we can install. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to put this on here and then put that behind it and then slide the whole axle in through the knuckle and then get this seated in there around the axle. It's kind of a little tricky, but pretty much explains it. So, I mean, it's very, very convenient to uh, put this in first. Very convenient. Very inconvenient to have this though. That's where we're at. All right, so I got, oh, what I do? I did 40, 40 on the bottom, something like that. 44 on the bottom, 69 on the top. And I'll go back to 150 on the bottom. But also dip your cotter pin in grease before you even stick it in there. I mean, just give it a little fighting chance and then I'll put it in and bend it off. The top one's done. Now I need to bang 150 foot pounds on the bottom one. All right, all the torque is done and we did pretty freaking good. 44, once again, 44 on the bottom, 69 on the top. Do not push the sleeve all the way down. Let the torque pull the sleeve down and look, one-handed. Pretty good. I mean, I could give it, I don't know. I might give it a tap or two just to let it reset. We got a little bit of squeaking going on on, the, on that damn ball joint. Huh. I mean, I don't know. I don't like the squeak because you'll hear it when you turn. It'll be like but it could loosen up. I mean, it's a sealed component. I guess I could have thrown some in there, but it really would not have been there very much. Take that ring off and shove some more in it, but look how small it is. I mean, Ron did say that he'd been putting these in and he just puts them in. Doesn't add grease to it. So let's give it a couple of wax right here and just. I might get that needle and throw some damn grease up there. Damn you. Mm. Should I pop it back? I don't know. I don't know what I'm... Mm. You know, I talked to Ron about this, about adding grease to these. And after putting that other one in, it had a little squeak inside to side where the rubber was touching the actual stud of the ball joint. I'm gonna go ahead and put some grease on this side. So now we have a test now. Okay, so in the future, Whenever, whichever ball joints go bad first, we did not put any grease on the passenger side. 
but we're adding grease to the driver's side. So as the future comes on, let's fast forward real quick five years and we'll see if we have a bonus to adding grease to sealed components and doing all this crap. But we're gonna find out right here on this. Okay, look how loose that is. I see that. Uh, we gotta clean that off because I put a little Loctite on here. But look, oh, there's good grease in there, okay. The bottom one didn't squeak. The bottom one actually sounded good. So since I got that grease out of there, I think I might just call it done. I can get it, okay, go. Again. Yep. You see it coming out of there? Mm -hmm. All right, I'd call that good. It took a lot more on the upper. So the uppers really need it more than the other ones. Now we got to get these snap rings on. These uh, very, very carefully there. Don't cut the boot too in this. That would just be a freaking stupid to try to do this preemptively and then you cut a hole in the boot. Yeah, that, don't do that. Take your time. You really want to see this? Watch me damage it as in real time. Okay. Yeah. Very slippery. You want a towel to wipe the grease off? Probably should. But I don't really want it too dry, otherwise it'll squeak just like the other one. There you go. Okay, I got one half in. I could use a light. Come on, baby. Oh, get down there. I feel like I need to help you. I do too. And not hold the phone in the light. Okay. Yeah, that top one was pretty much pain in the butt. I don't know that I would recommend doing that. Getting that snap ring back on was very, very interesting. But I got some grease in it now and hopefully it doesn't squeak so let's pop this one in too just real careful without breaking the boot which i did it backwards actually go this way pick it up we'll separate it just a hair just enough to get that end over and then work it the rest of the way around and get it on like that go this side tweak that put that on how it look that looks pretty let me see if i can spin the ring yep we're all in. Okay, so you just watch me put the bottom one on. I mean, they're kind of a pain in the butt, but it is doable. I'm using a 10 Allen in there. I just let it sit up against the knuckle and then an inch and a 5 16 And I'm trying to get it to snug so that it'll spin by itself. See the ball joint still spinning in it? So you also could say that you could put a jack on the bottom of here. Very common. Put a jack down here underneath it and lift the ball lift the whole knuckle up by the bottom ball joint and it will lock everything in the holes but i feel that if we do that we put an improper load on where the torque where the flange actually goes up into the axle right here and it i mean i'd rather let the nut pull it up and seat it where it needs to be rather than put a bunch of pressure on the bottom to lock this in the bore down there i just i you can put a jack underneath it, but I feel you get better results, just like I did on that side over there, to be able to turn it better if you tighten the nut and let it pull the knuckle up where it wants to be. Because you could put 175 foot-pounds of torque on the bottom of that son of a gun and press it up and then mess all the crap up. So I tighten it up like this, let the nut, everything's free. See? <laughs> just working it up, getting it to seat on the bottom, and then we'll torque the top, go back, torque the bottom, and let's hopefully it's good. Bottom one is tight spins very free look at the top one it's just sitting up there relaxing now i'll spin this one down and torque this to 69 right now and do not push that adjustment sleeve down don't push that down let the nut pull it down see how it's up right there tighten it down and you go kind of wiggle it around a little bit while you're going to 69 up there at the top let's we'll see what happens i need to go paint that now too remember why we lowered it so that when I put this torque on here, it doesn't touch the spring and I can get, see, I can get like all the way out of the way. That spring is right there. And I think it does mess with your torque. Just wiggling it around. I just, you guys just see him do that? 
He just double checked the torque setting on the torque wrench. Okay, right there, that's done. Now we'll look at the hole, see how we need to go forward a little bit. Do not go backwards. So now we gotta go tighter. See the hole right there? So don't loosen it. Go a little tighter so that lines up. You got a little bit unhappy on this one. This one's a little tight. So I have not done the 150 on the bottom. You got 44, I think, 69. And now we're gonna go to 150, but I'm gonna go ahead and Doesn't take a lot if you torque it right. See, that's that. That's for you. Hear it squeaking? No, it's good. No more no squeaking. So, I mean, I probably could have just smeared a little grease. Okay, so I would say if we put four ball joints on, go ahead and move the ring. I wouldn't take it off. Uh, well, we'll see in five years if these ball joints last longer on the other side. But I would not take off the ring. In hindsight, now I would just smear grease and move the ring up and down and get some grease in between the rubber and the metal. I would do that first, but right there. Now we'll do 150, drop it right through the middle. Why don't I turn the torque wrench on? That might be helpful. 70, 80, 90, 100. Let's tighten up a little bit. 120, 40, 150. Yep, tighten back up. Absolutely no memory steer from this. That's for sure. Now I did it all up, didn't I? Yeah. Did I? Are you sure? Nope. Oh. Wow. Make sure you do that crap. Of course, I'm not doing it all. I just did that to show you, but I want to put the cotter pin in first. But honestly, it's not a bad thing. You probably could go ahead and paint it and then put the cotter pin in. That way there's paint inside of there because these get rusted as a son of a gun. But you do put a little grease on it. Yep. So that's got to help too. I like that. Just basically get it caked with grease pretty good. At least get some grease on it. And then put it in. That way there's grease in there. And I'll put the long edge up so that I, I'll just pry it up and then pry the other one down. I don't get too carried away. That way it's easy to take them off. The cotter pin itself does the job. As long as the cotter pin don't fall out, it, it won't spin off. So as long as it's in the hole. So I'm gonna bend one up, one down. Just like that, finish it all up, put some paint on them. That way you got a little bit of corrosion protection. And honestly, I mean, even down there on those ball joints, throw some freaking paint and kind of give a little bit of a leak seal where the rubber touches the metal. Might as well have a bridge of paint there, heck with it, who cares? Uh, I did wire brush inside of there, kind of hit the knuckle a little bit in certain spots, that's okay. That's, I was more worried about getting it cleaned out so that it'll accept that new seal. This one, the RS-170. Yeah, that's gonna be fun, I already talked about that. Thank you.